Well, who didn't see this one coming? Who didn't see Activision taking the opportunity to put microtransactions into a remake of a 20-year-old game? At launch, the groundwork looked suspiciously set up to have microtransactions shoveled in at a later date, boasting as it did an online storefront that resembled Fortnite's, with random items rotating in and out daily. Coupled with a focus on grinding for coins to unlock cosmetic upgrades, the lack of microtransactions looked to me like one of two things. In fact, here I was a few weeks ago explicitly calling out microtransactions as the reason for Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel's suspiciously Fortnite-esque reward system. And it's got a timed storefront like Fortnite. And although there's no real money transactions in there just yet, it looks like a fucking microtransaction store. It looks like they were either in there at one time or they're planning to put them in in future. And it wouldn't be the first time they've shoveled microtransactions into a remark master of a game that never had them in the first place. Funnily enough, after I published that video, someone on Twitter kept bothering me, saying I was unfair to Crash Team Racing for saying this, saying that I just had a grudge against Activision and was taking it out on the game, and well, here we are. So let's get the word straight from the bastard's mouth and see what Activision had to say about smuggling in post-launch microtransactions as is its recent modus operandi. And try not to be too shocked when you find out they use the same tired, worn-out excuses to justify their manipulative monetization. So here they are announcing that they're turning an in-game currency into a premium currency weeks after the games come out. As always, the pit stop will be stocked with new and returning characters and cosmetic items which players can unlock using Wumper Coins. With all this content available, there will now be a way for players to fast track their Wumper Coin collection if they like. Starting in early August, <laughs> players will have the option to purchase Wumper Coin bundles from their game console stores to supplement the coins they earn by playing. This option won't change the game's core mechanics. Players will still earn one Wumper coins by playing the game in any mode just as before. They will just be able to purchase additional coins if they choose. Fuck off. Fuck off, Activision, you spineless little toads. The bullshit comes so naturally to them now, it just rolls off the tongue. That entire announcement, it isn't even an announcement, it's just pure corporate apologia wrapped around a kernel of news like bacon around a sausage. They rely on years old, previously established propaganda to justify these microtransactions, and I'm surprised anyone still falls for it anymore. Activision liberally applies the industry's favourite excuse of it's optional in this paragraph over and over again trying to drum it into people's heads because if you repeat a line of bollocks enough times with enough conviction even the corporate spokespeople regurgitating it might start to believe it one day i mean just look at the weaselly way it's written there'll be a new way for players to fast track their one per coin collection if they like. Starting in early August, players will have the option. It's just there to supplement the coins they earn by playing. They'll be able to purchase additional coins if they choose. It's so clearly written in a preemptive way. Going out of its way to repetitively emphasize the it's optional excuse. And of course they lead off by emphasizing that it's cosmetic. Which of course many of us know is a bullshit line. Especially as we now know, per industry talks, that social pressure, social acceptance is one of the many psychological tricks that in-game economies use to manipulate people into spending. We have kids being bullied at school for having default skins in Fortnite, these quote-unquote mere cosmetic options on our status symbols, the word default has become a school insult, and that's not just kids being kids, that's by design. We now know it's by design. Do I need to play the Toral Fjernström clip again? Let's play the Toral Fjernström clip again. We are herd animals, we tend to do what all, all of the others do. Uh, you all sit quiet listening to me because that's what all, all of the other guys do, do here. So, uh, especially when people are similar to our, to us. This means that uh, you should have uh, the socially accepted way of behaving in your game should be paying. You want to tell pe people, for instance, their c when a clan member of theirs spend IAP money, you want the whole clan to know, because then 
that becomes the socially acceptable way of behaving. And that's why it's never optional. These microtransactions are never optional because none of us have the option to not have the microtransactions in there to begin with. These microtransactions are designed to prey on certain types of people. They are designed to manipulate people into spending money, whether it plays on their impatience, offering them a way to, as Activision itself says, fast track their way to rewards, or it plays on people's vulnerability to social pressure, their susceptibility to a haves and have nots economy, an economy that makes cosmetic microtransactions just as insidious if not more so than ones that offer in-game advantages. Cosmetic microtransactions are more subtle in that way. They don't offer blatant advantages so they look more acceptable, so that allows them to more easily burrow their way into people's brains like some sort of tick. The temptation and the manipulation and the social pressure, that's not an option. I mean, it's no coincidence that Wolfenstein Youngblood gets cosmetic microtransactions at the same time it introduces co-op. You're suddenly paying real money to buy Nazi gold at the same time as you have other players to show your cosmetics off to. It's all part of the same racket. And if you want to sit there and say, well, it doesn't affect me, I don't feel the pressure to do this. I don't feel the pressure to buy cosmetics. Well, you're not the target. You're not the one that these publishers are preying on. There are many customers who are the prey, who are the quarry. And I know I've said this more than a handful of times over the years, but every time a company like Activision tries to propagate this bullshit, it needs to be pushed back against. Because people still buy it, they still swallow it hook, line and sinker. The so-called AAA game industry has done a brilliant job of getting people to believe they're shite. There are people who have followed my work for years who still come at me to ask what the problem with microtransactions is, despite my repeated laying out of the issues. There are friends and acquaintances I've made in games media who have followed and seen my work for over 10 years, who still ask what the big fucking deal is. And they do so without ever thinking of or addressing the points I've been making for those 10 years. Over the course of this console generation and some of the last gen, games have been designed to become less rewarding, more grindy, more resembling the free-to-play economies that have been all over the mobile market for a long, long, long time. Unlockable rewards, character skins, cosmetic upgrades, these were all part of the basic package. Once upon a time, you would buy a game and it would be a complete product, with in-game rewards as standard. Now the game industry has taken that out, sold it back to us at a premium, and we're expected to be grateful for it. Well, that can fuck off. That idea can fuck right off. But of course, all the industry has to do is wait people like me out. We're a dying breed, we who remember remember what games used to be like, and this is all before we get to Activision's slimy habit of smuggling microtransactions into games weeks after launch and long after the game reviews are out. Forewarned is forearmed, some people like to know before they buy a game whether there are in-app purchases, albeit that they have compulsive spending habits, shopping addiction struggles, and they don't want a game that tries to manipulate them into spending more money. But if you are in the bracket of players that do not want to buy games or want to at least be warned about games with microtransactions in them, I think it's become quite clear now, never trust Activision, even if it's a remaster, even if it's a remake of a 20 year old game, because Activision keeps pulling that shit. I mean, Jesus Christ, Activision is the publisher that put out Modern Warfare Remastered, which wasn't even a remake, it was a remaster, and riddled that with microtransactions and loot boxes. Activision isn't the only publisher that's pulled this stunt, Electronic Arts has done it in the past before, and it's so frigging slimy, you will not be able to convince me that they don't put these microtransactions in long after the press has died down about the game, until loads of players are already invested in the game, for nefarious reasons. I've got quite a few thoughts about these post-launch microtransactions, enough for a Jimquisition, and I think I'm gonna do that on Monday. But Activision can fuck off in its cowardice in the meantime. And I do consider it cowardly, I don't think cowardice is the only reason they smuggle microtransactions in post-launch, but Activision did not have the spine to admit before now that microtransactions were coming to its remake of a 20-year-old game. And doesn't that feel like a special breed of desecration? Let us take games from yesteryear, from a time before microtransactions ruined everything, and then riddle them with the free-to-play economies that have no place in a game you've paid up for 
Battlefront 4. Microtransactions have no place in a game you have to pay to get. Simple as that. And I know to some, still, after all the bullshit this industry's pulled, to some that still seems a bit too hard line. But you give these companies an inch and they take the fucking nation. We've seen what they've done with our acceptance of their bullshit one too many times. And I've spoken to too many people who've had their psychological issues preyed upon and exploited for money to give any of them a shred of the benefit of the doubt. Just this morning someone came at me on Twitter saying, well Activision could easily have charged full price for Crash Team Racing, as if I should be grateful they didn't and that's why I should be accepting of the microtrans- oh, Fuck off, no! It's a not all that impressive remake of a game from 1999. And regardless of the price, free-to-play economies belong in free-to-play games. This has all become sickeningly normalised. And I don't want loot boxes to let the goalposts shift here. The at least it's not loot boxes excuse is starting to become the new it's just cosmetic excuse. It's all bullshit. Video games never used to have this bullshit and this bullshit doesn't belong here. Activision can shove its wampa coins up its ass and fuck off while it's doing it.